In the mid-1800s, a group of miners on Indonesia's island of Belitun were attempting to extract amounts of the element tin from sands in local riverbeds. Since the main mineral that contained this tin was cassiterite, which was about seven times denser than water and was far more dense than any surrounding rock, when it was pulverized into fine sand-sized particles, it settled to the very bottom of riverbeds as a black sand concentrate which looks like this. Happy with his work, one placer miner attempted to see how deep these black sands went. Yet, while shoveling out the sand, he encountered a hard thud caused by his shovel hitting larger rocks. Curious to see what he was hitting, he retrieved a few of these larger rocks, which looked nothing like he had ever seen before. These rocks had a dark black color, were highly rounded, yet were fairly lightweight. Further investigations revealed that much of the island contained a fairly thin layer of these same rocks, measuring half a centimeter to 18 centimeters in diameter. What was found on that day was in fact a layer of a type of asteroid impact generated rock known as tektites. These tektites formed as the result of an impact event 790,000 years ago when an 1800 meter or 5900 foot wide asteroid impacted Earth at a velocity of 17 kilometers per second, triggering a catastrophic release of energy which was equivalent to the detonation of 360,000 megatons of TNT. Due to the amount of energy, large chunks of rock at the edge of the impact site were heated to extreme temperatures which caused them to partially melt while also being flown high into the atmosphere. Reaching high in the atmosphere, the temperature plunged to negative 20 degrees Celsius, causing the melted rocks to solidify instantaneously without time to form any crystals, forming a type of impact glass. Over the time span of the next 96 seconds, these tektites fell back to the ground, eventually impacting the surface. The tektites in question fell across 15% of the entire Earth, ranging from Mozambique and Madagascar to the west, Australia and Antarctica to the south, China in the north, and Micronesia to the east. While these were collectively referred to as the Australasian tektites, which fell up to 10,000 kilometers away from the impact site, the unusually abundant tektites on Indonesia's Balintan Island are now referred to by the trade name Bilitanites. But why were these tektites so abundant at a location 2,000 kilometers away from the impact site which is today buried beneath Laos's dormant Bolovin volcanic field? The answer might have to do with the angle the impact occurred at. The impact crater is not a circle but is rather fairly oblong with the longest dimensions running along the south-southeast trend. However, there is more. It is generally accepted that the tektite including lobe that is the furthest distance away from the impact site represents the vector that the asteroid impacted at. In this case, the furthest region is in Antarctica, and if we draw the south-southeast trending vector, you might notice that it passes right through Bellington Island. In other words, at various distances, the areas with the expected highest abundances of tektites would be expected to be located along this line. Belington Island, due to pure luck, happened to be one of these locations 790,000 years ago. Today, these fascinating tektites are a reminder of the sheer power an asteroid or common impact contains. As, at the time of the impact, it would have only taken 192 seconds for tektites to fall on Belington Island, with the actual shockwave arriving 97 minutes later. Today, the so-called bilitonites, with some exceptions, generally sell for between $4.75 and $5.50 per gram, and since many pieces are between 10 and 50 grams in weight, generally are sold for between $50 and $250 a piece. Because of the economic importance of this stone, an enlarged replica of one of these tektites can be found at the top of a monument in one of the island's towns. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.